Hey guys, it's May May. I'm a trusty sidekick. Oh, Vinny's here. Yet again. Every still week. Still here. I, I, you know. <laughs> we can't explain it. I can't. You just keep coming back to me every time. I know. What a blessing. Um, that, that joke's getting old. We need a new one. No. <laughs> That's okay. We stick on something. So, first I will apologize for this mess. Um, it's going around in the May May world. It is. And in our family. Our household is indebted with beginnings the crud. of winter. And it's just, uh, I don't feel bad. I just sound bad. And I sneeze a lot. So, bear with me if I have to stop and sneeze. And I feel like I'm going to have to. So, I wanted to talk to y'all about something. Last week, I made the comment that we shouldn't think we should pray. I don't want to be a thinker. I want to be a prayer. Yeah. And it's been on me a little bit because I was talking to my mom about it. And I thought, I hope it doesn't confuse people. I thought we should really kind of clarify it and talk about turning our ponderings into prayers. That's kind of what I want to talk about. Pondering into prayers. Yeah. So I just want to talk about it. And it this may not speak to you today. It has been on me hard. Like God's been telling, he's been teaching me this a lot, right? Yeah. Um, but here's the deal. So it came from this. I was uh, hashing out a plan, okay? And I spent... As you do. As I do. Frequent, as frequent, I do. Frequent, yeah. <laughs> Not this kind of plan, but like I was hashing out a plan. And I'd spent so much time thinking on it. And then at some point, I remember, and it was probably in the shower because I do a lot of this. I do a lot. When I get in that enclosed space, my brain can do anything, can do nothing but bounce off the walls. And that's what it does. So um, I remember in mid-thought going to myself, and this is probably the Holy Spirit, going, have you prayed about this as much as you've thought about it? Now listen, I'm not saying worrying about it. This is different, okay? It was not something I was worried about. It's something I'm thinking about how to do. Well, so let me let me kind of set what I feel like you're saying. Okay. So you are a constant thinker. A constant thinker. One of the things Brother Terry says about you is he loves being around you because he can see your eyes just flash. Because I'm like, oh, we can do, and we can do, and we can do. Your brain is just yeah. going, J -j 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 all the different thoughts that come into your head. How you funnel them, I don't have a clue. I mean, it's just the way God created you, I guess, because you're so creative, so you're always thinking. But I also always. wonder if that lack of knowing how to funnel them caused my anxiety. Well, I'm sure it does because, you know, you spend... You can't stay. Oh, oh I don't sit you can't on anything. Stay on one road. I you love know? change. You know what I'm saying? It's constantly going. So this is who I am. Okay. Yep. So in this moment, where the Holy Spirit stopped me for a second and said, "Have you prayed about this as much as you've thought about this?" Right. And again, I'm not saying worry. This is not a worry situation. That's a whole different thing. And we may talk about worry in a second. But this is thinking on something. And I thought, no, I haven't even asked God one single time about this. I've been hashing it out. And for me, me being the fixer, I'm always trying to figure out how to fix it. Okay. So I'm, you're you're doing this and coming up with ideas, and I'm doing this, trying to figure out how the heck am I going to make all this happen? <laughs> so that's kind of our world, you know. We spend so much time pondering. Pondering. And I was saying to myself, self, it was, again, the Holy Spirit was talking to me and, and God was teaching me, if you would take some time to talk to me first and ponder with me, not ponder, converse with me, then you don't have to waste as much time as you waste pondering. Well, because if, <laughs> if, if we spent more time asking him what we should do instead of trying to figure out how we should do. You know, it, it'd be a lot easier if it we works just in, ask, would it? It works in every situation. And here's what I want to say. The Bible tells us we should be in constant prayer, you know. Yeah. And I've struggled with that because, first off, my prayer life is, is, is all over the place as my thoughts are. Mm -hmm. I'm working on trying to get that better. I know you guys are waiting on the prayer journal, but you know what the problem is? My thoughts are all over the place. Right. So I'm and I think God's speaking to me about, hey, let's dial it back. Let's chat a little bit. Right. So consciously, I've been doing something different consciously. And this only been a couple of weeks. But consciously, when something would come to my brain, I would go, OK, how do you want to handle it, God? Instead of me going, well, I could do this and I could do this and I could do this and I could think on this. And then that would lead me over here. And then this would lead me over here. Instead, I go, OK, 
How do you want this to play out, God? And you, what was the word you used? Consciously? Consciously. How about the word intentionally? It was funny because I don't think I've used it in this. We talked a minute ago. We were saying, I was telling you that I think we should change our ponders to conscious prayer. Because we, we like, instead of going, instead of spinning our wheels and spinning our wheels, we need to consciously turn that into prayer. Well, you're saying we need to intentionally. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's just a different word that might be easier to, to grasp. Intentionally, Because yeah. we have to choose joy, <laughs> you know. We have to choose have to, to speak to God. We have to choose to not ponder, but to pray. It's an intentional choice. Now, I'm not telling you to never think, to never think on something. You need to think on the word. You need to think on the scripture. You need to ponder. Mary pondered what God told her in her heart. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying don't ponder. No. I think we're supposed to do. We should spend time on what God's saying to us. The problem is when we spend so much time on something we haven't even asked him about yet. Yeah, because you don't want to give the impression that you don't think people should think on stuff. No, I right. want us to think. For example, because I'm bad about this and you're great about this. You need <laughs> to, th well, you need to think about what you're going to say. Okay. Yeah. But you really don't even have to do that. Because if you say, God, tell me what to say. Give me the words to say. Help me say what you want me to say and not what I want to say. See how I can turn that around? See how I can stop going, what am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to say? And turn it into, tell me, God. And you'll know it because I'll tell you something. There's been times in our life, especially as um, I don't love being a, that's not a fair statement. I'm not going to say that. I like being an entrepreneur. I like owning a business. I like that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I don't like some of the stuff that comes with it. There's there's some really bad, junky stuff you have to do as a business owner. Yeah. There's some conversations you have to have. There's some things that have to be said. It it just is. And it's not just in May May. It's I've always been in a position of management or administration of some sort. Okay. There's some really yucky stuff you have to do. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and I remember this one particular time I had an employee who was going through some stuff. Okay. And I was very conscious of what they were going through because I had also been through it and it had, it really messed up their work life. It, it, it had taken over and made it to where we could no longer work together. And so I had to have this conversation with this employee. And I remember before that conversation praying, because I knew this person was sort of on the edge, um, not in their work life, just their home life. And I knew where they were mentally because I'd been there, right? So I remember praying before I went into that meeting, God, don't let me say anything that is harmful. Give me words that will help. Give me the things to say. And I remember thinking to myself, how am I going to know it's God telling me? You know what I'm saying? How am I going to know I'm saying what God wants me to say? And then the conversation happened. And I remember in the conversation, having things to say that aren't words I would say, and going, oh, I see. This is you. I don't know to say this to this person. I don't know that this is, you know what I'm saying? This mm -hmm. is not what I would say here. This is clearly, and I felt good about it. Like, I felt like this is the right thing to say to this person. And so it's the same thing in our thinking life. Instead of us going, okay, for well, I don't know a good example that we have a lot in our life that goes on. Yeah. So I'm trying to think of an example that we can talk, that we think on, or that something that would, um, Here's a silly thing. Here's a silly, silly thing. Okay. <laughs> this is too silly for this, but I don't want to share personal information today. Um, painting your house, inside your house, your walls. My mother panics over it. I don't think I do. Right? My mother panics. She's like, this is the, I'm sticking with this color. I know this color works. We're just going to repaint this color. And I'm a person that says, if we got a paintbrush out, it's changing. You know, mm, that is you. So in my house, when I was planning my color in my mind, I didn't panic over it. I just knew what I wanted and went with it. But truth of the matter is I spent weeks pondering that color mm -hmm. because I looked at every Pinterest board and every picture and every Google thing before I did it. But in my mind, I'm like, I'm not scared of color. And then when it got done, it wasn't the color you thought it was going to be. And then I went, how do we do with this? <laughs> we deal with, I love it. Actually, I love it. I love it too. But the funny thing is. All that time we spend in pondering, 
instead of just asking God. And again, that was a silly situation. I wish I could come up with a, I wish I could give you a really good personal example, but right now is not a good time to do that. Um, but there's, you know, what, think on your own life. Let's think, think right now in your world. What things are you pondering instead of praying over? Yeah. That's it. So here's what I'm saying. And I had a scripture to share with y'all. It's from Genesis 31, 31. It's where Jacob took Rachel and Leah and left Laban's house. And I say Laban, some people say something else, but I've always said Laban. It's all I ever know. But he left and uh, Laban chased him. If you don't know the story, read it. It's very interesting. But there was, a, in thirty-one, thirty-one, Jacob says to him. He says this. Jacob answered and said to Laban, because I was afraid for I thought that you would take your daughters from me by force. So Laban says to him, why did you run? Why did you leave me? Um, and he also asked why he stole things from him, which he didn't. But read the chapter. Anyway, in that moment, and I, and I told Vince, I'm kind of taking this out of context, but I'm not. I want to change the context for our, what we're talking about today, but I'm not taking the scripture out of context. Jacob was afraid because he thought. Mm-hmm. And this is not my thought. Let me tell you, I am well, doing um, like I was when we were talking about it before. It's not, it's not taking out of context because the the point is he was afraid because he thought he thought that Laban would react a certain so way. That's not taking it out of context. It's not. So, but I'm I not mean, gonna. But I'm not focusing on the Laban and Jacob situation. You can read that. That's a whole other situation. I'm focusing on the fact that he was afraid because he thought what Laban would do. Your point is. He was afraid because he thought. Had he prayed, so he might have gotten in, a different answer. In all of our lives, it applies. Yes. Okay? The circumstances of why he was afraid or why he was doing what he, why he ran is not important. The thought is he was afraid because he thought. He thought. And the funny thing is, um, God actually had spoken to Laban, which was interesting. You would think that God would have spoken to Jacob, but Jacob was thinking. Like, this, this is me taking this for me, okay? <laughs> I'm no preacher. I don't claim to be. That's not, I'm just telling you what I see. And I want to tell you that this is so interesting. I have started doing the reading plans on the version Bible app. This thing's awesome. I had no idea how good this thing was. You can pick a topic, by the way, and then every day you get these different, and what I love about them is, you know, we just had this conversation. Because I'm a changer, I can't do these 13-week Bible studies. It, it's too much for me. I like change too much. Mm-hmm. And I get bogged down and I won't complete them because I get bogged down. I know I'm not alone. Some of you guys are judging me real hard, but some of you guys are like, I'm with you, girl. I cannot do it. So I love these you version Bible studies because they come in three day and six day and you can pick mm-hmm. how long you want to stay on a topic. So I found one on making our thoughts, you know, our thoughts like God's thoughts or letting our thoughts be God's thoughts. Right. And the first, and today it was Jacob was afraid because he thought, and I went, yes, that's it. And I think we do that to ourselves in our worry and in our anxiety. We're afraid because here we go. Now, this is where I can tell you this. This is true. Been there because Satan sparks us. Okay, for the anxiety pop up. You know the spark, you all have it. If you have anxiety, you have a spark. That spark happens. And then instead of capturing that thought and turning it into prayer, we take that thought and turn it into all the things that might happen. Because that's what anxiety is. Mm -hmm. It's the fear of the unknown. It's no different than yesterday. Personal experience. I am sitting at the house. You called me on the telephone. I said, where are Sorry. you? You said, I'm almost home. I said, okay. I was literally turning into the driveway. 30 minutes later, you're still not home. I'm sitting in the house. Where is she at? What's wrong? Why hadn't she made it? All these scenarios start running through my head. It's my fault. And then I get a text. I'm home. I'm sitting outside talking to my mother on the phone. And I'm like, okay. I was beginning to worry. Why? I mean, thought. My thoughts started, oh gosh, what's happening? Oh, she's had a wreck. She's done flipped the Jeep. She's done oh slipped gosh. it off in the rain. She's run off it was in a bed somewhere. You know, all those thoughts. And instead of going, hey God, I know you got this. And But you know, what was it Mr. Gerald would say? Uh, be prayerfully concerned. Be prayerfully concerned. Don't worry. 
And I re- and I realized sitting in in the I'll say this this is funny here's a funny part of that so used to when I drove boom boom you knew when I was home oh yeah you could hear her coming you could hear me coming down the road because boom boom was loud well I forget that and I pulled up and, and normally and he knows I'm this person too I listen to radio shows old radio shows on radio classics on Sirius XM so sometimes Shameless I'll get plug for them I'll them. pull up and I'll be five minutes from the show finishing and I'll want to hear the end of it and in boom boom you knew that's what I was doing like you would hear me and you knew I was either listening to the radio or talking on the phone right but yesterday when I pulled up and God told me which is funny because he told me to tell you because I'm just talking to mama and we've been we we spoke for an hour on the phone but I've been talking to her blah blah blah. we're just doing what girls do blah 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 and then I went oh Vince thought I was gonna be home and he can't hear me so I don't know if you noticed this but I opened the garage door thinking he'll hear that and then I thought okay he heard that he knows I'm here and then I went I better tell him so you might have been praying or maybe God was telling me to be a better person and let you know. But God was probably telling you to be a better, better person. Better person? Probably. Probably just across the board. To be a better person. We can always lean on that one. Yeah. Anyway, and I know we got a little derailed, but I hope this makes sense to somebody because it's really opening. It's really awakening another, almost like another spiritual sense. Is that a, like... I don't know how to describe it, but now when I go to ponder, I save the pondering for after he tells me. Yeah. So like, think about Mary. Here's, here's this angel that appears to this young girl and tells her what God has for her. That she is chosen to carry the Messiah. Okay. And afterwards, she ponders all the things he said in her heart, but it doesn't say that she thought about it and decided not to do it. You know what I'm saying? She pondered what God had said. And I want to be a ponderer of what God has to say. And how do we do that? You know, by hearing the word of God. Mm -hmm. We ponder those things. But I don't have to try to think it out myself. And then ultimately what always happens. What always happens? We think and we think and we think and we think and we think. And we can't come up with a solution. we go, hey God. Hey God. (laughs) What's up right here? So let's don't do it anymore. Let's turn our pondering into praying and then let's ponder what God tells us. Let's think on what he tells us and watch how much clarity, watch how quickly your brain goes, t- goes, I'm serious. When you think about this, okay, and you do this, when you have a thought and it's running through your heads, your heads, your head. I do feel like I have two heads sometimes. <laughs> There are occasions when you'll go, what do you think about this? And you'll ask my thoughts. How much easier would it be if we said, God, here's what I'm thinking. What do you think about this? And then let him answer. And then let him answer. And then if you need to, if he wants you to think on it, he'll give you the inclination. Do you, do you agree with that? Am I? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, it's, it's a very, very simple thought, but how incredible is it? Just let him. Just, how much time do we spend wasting on pondering stuff he don't even want us to do. I cannot tell you how many times I have thought a process out from start to finish. Okay? You know me. I have thought a process out from start to finish and then decided it was not the right thing to do. I mean, how many times have I been at Walmart and our buggy is absolutely full of stuff? Why is this throwing me under the bus? (laughs) All of a sudden, it's like, "Mm, I'm not doing this. And what about me? How many hours have I spent looking at shooting houses on the internet only for you to say, get you one, get you one. Happy anniversary. Happy Merry well, Christmas. Happy anniversary. Merry one. Christmas. Happy Valentine's day. Happy, get you one. Happy birthday. <laughs> and then what did I decide? I'm not spending that much money. But the thing is, and those are, I really want to give you guys a really, really good example. And I have a really good example, but it's just not the time to share it. It's just not the time to share it. It's not a bad thing. It's just a really good example. And until God answers, I don't want to share it. That's the whole point. So that's why I'm saying it's not just these simple things we're talking about. There's now deeper things. There's deeper things, you know, and you have them going on in your life. One of them might be, let me use a real example. Maybe you've gotten bad health news and you want to get a second opinion. There's nothing wrong with getting a second opinion. Get that second opinion. But then instead of, hashing them and hashing them and hashing them and hashing them just hand them to god and say okay god which one and let him answer you he will he does not he did not create us to not have a relationship with him 
Well, and what does the Bible say? You have not because you ask not. You have not because you ask not. That doesn't just apply to material things. Right. That, mati- that applies to everything. And I promise you, if you struggle with thought, with stinking thinking, you know who you are if you do. Because I had it. And, I, and we all have it. Vince has it too. Vince has it. Let's be. Oh, look, he's been throwing me under the bus. Oh, I, st- I struggle with stinking thinking. Stinking though. thinking Ooh, gets him. It'll get me by. Don't do it. Just hand it to God. And just go, okay, I'm not going to spend an hour pondering this. What do you think of this? What does your word say about this? That's another thing. Go to the word. Because I believe that God, uh, okay, maybe this is for me. But I believe that God sometimes says to me, like my dad says to me, have you looked it up? You, I mean, he may not say that to y'all, but my dad <laughs> always said to me when I would go to him with a question, have you looked it up? And sometimes I think God is going, I've already answered this. It's in the book. I don't have you looked it up. I know some people don't have the relationship with with God like I do. Some people don't speak like that. But I do believe that sometimes he says to me, I already told you this one. You know? I just see God like that. I don't think he talks to me like thee and thou should I've have looked that up. I told you that, that I believe one hundred percent God talks to us in a way we can understand. And God he talks talk- to me like my dad would. You know, he, you're a blunt person. And he's blunt with me. And the only way that God's going to get through to you, he ain't going to sugarcoat it for you. He's going to speak to you just like you think. And sometimes he's funny. Sometimes I'll go, oh, that was a good one, God. That was a good one. Like, sometimes I'll just go, yeah, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. I mean, I can remember even as a teenager sitting on the beach praying about something. Because I love to sit on the beach and pray. I mean, just looking out at the ocean. You still do. Not as a teenager. You still no, do. I That's still your thing. To. I love to do that. And and I can remember sitting there praying and God just answering with scriptures when I'd start praying. I'm I've just already like, answered this one. I've already wrote that down for you. <laughs> you just go by the handbook, you know, and I'd be like, okay, God, I know you said this. <laughs> I know you said this, but, you know, always thinking. Mm-hmm. We always do. Anyway, I hope this spoke to somebody today. I don't want to drag it on because we'll tend to water things down. I feel like God is saying, turn your pondering into prayer and then ponder ponder the things of God mm-hmm. and what he has to say and what he does and, and what he wants you to have. And so, so many, so many times people go, how am I supposed to know God's will? Well, all you gotta do is ask him. Honestly, I know it sounds crazy. If you'll ask him, he'll tell you like he just will. I don't know how he'll tell you. But he will. <laughs> like, you'll figure it out. You'll be like, oh, there it is. You'll know. There's a way you know. And so many times we act like we don't know God's will, but that's because we don't want to do God's will. But mm-hmm. there's a there comes a time when we don't that want to. That's a whole other can. Yeah, that's a whole, maybe that's another discussion. But so this week, I want you to see what you think of this. I'm not telling you to put this into practice. This may not be your thing, okay? But if it is your thing, see see how much time you spend thinking versus praying. And there's a difference. That's that intentional part. You got to intentionally turn it into prayer. So I'm anxious to hear what you have to say in the comments. I want to see. Um, you don't have to agree with me, by the way. Like you could say, "Okay, you're off on this one." I, it's okay. This is what I feel like God's saying to me. But if this does speak to you, I hope that it'll um, help your brain to take a breather. Really, it, you'll see what you're. You'll see what I mean. If you struggle with it, you'll know. Yeah, it's one of those things. Have you seen that thing where it says, "If you know, you know." That's what this is. If you know, you know. So, thank you for letting me just hash that out with you today. It was fun. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> I love the way your brain works. Do you sometimes go, oh my goodness. <laughs> well, the thing that I do most of the time is I'm like, how did you get that? You did that to me this morning when I was trying to tell you this. Uh, you kept you going. That? You kept looking at me with that look you kept doing in your eyes. And then when I finally said, I'm taking the scripture out of context, you said, no, you're not. Look. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay then. Okay then. <laughs> Um, why don't you close us in prayer today? I'll do that. Hey, God, thanks for today. Thanks for this time that we could spend together. And Lord, I thank you that uh, our thoughts are not your thoughts, but God, I want my thoughts to be more what you think. So God, help me to uh, ask you, help me to pray and talk to you about my situations. Help me to have a better relationship with you where I feel like I can just come to you and talk. I mean, that's what you want, God. You sent your son Jesus to the cross to die for us so that we could just talk and have a relationship. God, help me to hash out everything with you instead of pondering and 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 thinking and worrying and, and, and stressing over my own thought process, God. If I just ask you, how much easier would it be if once I ask you, you told me, then I just think about what you want me to do 
instead of me stressing over what I want to do. God help us to do that in our anxiety, in our health, in our finances, in our marriage, in everything. Help us just to ask you what you have for us. God, what you have for me is far better than what I can come up with on my own. You promised me in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 that you can do exceeding and abundantly above all I could even ask or think. So God, if I can't think it and I can't ask it, it's clear to me, I need to ask you. So God, help me to do that. Help me to stop um, spending so much time thinking and figuring out and trying to cipher and decide which way to go. When if I just ask you, you tell me. So help me to do that, Lord. Help me to simplify that part of my brain so that I can uh, communicate with you better. Lord, we just love you. I pray for those that are hurting today, those that are struggling, uh, those that are going through uh, health issues or financial issues or marriage issues, whatever it might be. Lord, I know you already know, and I know that you're in control and that, God, you want to make everything better for us if we'll just seek you and ask. (laughs) How funny, it all goes full circle. Lord, we love you, and thank you again for this time we can share from our heart with all these folks watching today. May you bless them and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ciphering. Ciphering. Some people might wonder what that is. (laughs) In the South, people cipher instead of thinking, ciphering it. Well, in the, you know. Jeffro Bodine had to cipher. <laughs> if you don't know who Jeffro Bodine is, you need to look up the Beverly Hillbillies. Uh, ciphering. Because he was always ciphering. <laughs> so don't cipher, pray. There you go. We, we love, love you guys. guys. <laughs> you owe me a drink. I owe you a drink. Have a great blessed Sunday. We'll see you again next week. Bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.